In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a watermark logo to your Zoom meeting without using a virtual background, and we'll do that right now. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm Brian White, and welcome back to Video Zoos. I'm on a mission to help you create videos that get results. Now, my clients find these tips and videos helpful, so if you want the same experience, the same result, please consider clicking that subscribe button now. I'm actually pretty excited to be sharing this video with you today. This is something I've been working on for quite some time and I just figured it out. It was like, it was just one of those brain fart moments, you know? So basically what I'm gonna do is show you how to add a watermark logo to your Zoom meeting without ever using a virtual background. Some of you can't even use virtual backgrounds because your computer is not compatible. What I'm about to show you doesn't require a virtual background. So let's get right into the video. So step number one you want to do is find your logo. Now if you have a logo and it's say like a JPEG file type, that file type is likely gonna have a white background on it. And you may not necessarily want a white background on your Zoom background with your logo on it. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to remove the background from a JPEG that has a white background. And we're gonna do this inside an application called Kapwing. So visit kapwing.com, I'll put a link to it below. But once you're there, sign up for a free account and once you're inside the free workspace, you wanna click on this button right here that says new content. Now on this page is where you're going to upload your logo. Now. You might have a logo on your website, or you might have a, a link to your logo you can paste in here. Uh, most of us will probably have a logo or something on our hard drive or in our on our desktop, something like that. So, so whatever it is for you, go ahead and download or upload that logo. I have this logo right here. I'm going to upload. And once that logo is uploaded, you'll see it pop up on the screen inside Kapwing. Now, what we want to do inside Kapwing is remove this white background that you see. So with your graphic selected, just make sure you have it clicked on. You'll see these little handles here indicating that it is selected. You're going to click on this button right here that says Erase. Now, now we're inside the Erase tool. So the first thing we want to do before we use this magic wand tool is click on this Erase button and then bump up the eraser size a bunch. And basically we're going to erase the edges of this image. Sometimes this tool will not remove the edges, the fine line edges of um, a logo that has a white background on it. So to shortcut that and prevent that from happening, we're going to just do this. So now, once we have that, as you can see, easy to draw a kind of a square around that edge, we're going to click on magic wand, and we're gonna click inside the white. And the white's going to turn gray, indicating that we have selected it, and then we're gonna click back over here on Remove Pixels. And now we have this transparent background looking thing. Now sometimes you have white in between letters in a logo or spaces in a logo. So simply click inside those, Remove Pixels, and remove as many pixels as you need. Now we have our logo and it's transparent. We're gonna click on this button for Done. And now we're back inside the main studio in Kapwing, where you can see your transparent logo. Now to export this, we're simply going to click on the red button up here that says export image, and Kapwing will process that image and allow you to download it. So click on download, and now it's downloaded to your system. So step number two is we need to download an application called Open Broadcast Software, or commonly known as OBS Studio. OBS Studio is a free download, it's a safe download, and you can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So go ahead and download OBS Studio, and when you open it for the first time, you will click on some items to auto-configure your settings, but once that's ready to go, it will look something like this. This will be your preview monitor, there's some buttons over here, and then over here is where the main action takes place. Now, this may look kind of um, daunting, but we're only gonna be using OBS for a very small piece, so let me simplify it for you. OBS is broken down into scenes and sources. S scenes over here, sources right here. By default, OBS will have a scene created for us. So now we basically just need to add a source. And our source for this example is going to be our webcam video and our transparent logo. So to do this, let's click on this plus icon and we're gonna add our video first 
into something called video capture device. Click on that and we can keep the name as is, click OK. And then here, you're going to simply click on this, drop it down and look for your webcam. Now the webcam I'll be using today is my FaceTime HD webcam, which is a built-in webcam on my iMac. You'll see your preview monitor here, go ahead and click OK. And now we have our video feed on our preview window. Now this camera I'm using today is a 720 and this canvas is a 1080. So it's gonna be smaller so we can just drag it here and it'll click, kind of snaps in there to make it full screen. Your camera may be a 1080 and that's fine. You can skip that step. Now we need to basically add our logo. So let's click back over here, down here into plus on sources and click on image and we'll keep the name the same as okay. Here's where we're gonna upload our logo. So let's go to Browse, and if you just downloaded that from Kapwing, it'll likely be in your Downloads folder, and there it is. And now we have our logo in here. Let's click OK, and our logo is now on screen. Now we can just kind of move it around a little bit. We can grab these handles and shrink it, make it a little smaller. Maybe it kind of sits in the bottom corner of your video feed or up top here or on top of your face, whatever you want to do. Um, to make it look professional though, I kind of like to keep it in the bottom corner. That way it's not obstructing your video feed, but it's also branding your video feed, which is what we want. The last thing to do is to click on this button over here called Start Virtual Camera. And basically what the virtual camera does is it takes the video feed, it takes the logo and merges the items into one single source that can be recognizable on Zoom, Google Meet, any really video conferencing platform out there, and it'll be recognized as its own camera, okay? So now we have our virtual camera started inside OBS. The next step to do is to launch Zoom. So let's go ahead and launch Zoom. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into a new meeting. Click on new meeting, and then once Zoom is launched, we wanna click down here ne next to the uh, camera icon, this little carrot menu. Click that, and then from select the camera, we're simply going to select OBS virtual camera. And now, when you do that, you will see your logo inside Zoom on your Zoom video feed. So the benefit of this is that you don't have to have the compatibility to use a virtual background. You're actually not even using the virtual background. You're just selecting the virtual camera by way of OBS. Now that you've been able to add a logo watermark to your Zoom meeting, you're definitely going to want to explore adding a video background without using Zoom's video background requirements. Definitely check out that video and more. Once again, thanks for watching Video Zeus, helping you create videos that get results.